Hi there, Leonard Parker here. In this video, I'm going to go over entity optimization and how you can use it to improve the visibility for your restoration website and the Google search results. So this video really is focused on SEO. So if you rather prefer to focus on PPC, take a look at some of our PPC videos, but this is strictly a SEO tactic. Now, uh, before I get into using a tool, why do you need to optimize for entities? Well, Google, they're always doing a series of updates and you know changes to how they display and return results. And the trend recently has really been moving to more of a semantic web, whereas if your content on your website is connected to different entities that are relevant to the damage restoration industry, water damage, your local area. Uh, this improves its relevancy for that user search query. And pretty much what we're doing here is looking at the entity optimization for the first page of results. Uh, so if you're ranking on page two, you're kind of, you know, almost there, but not quite, or even lower in the Google search results, this is a great way to improve the content on your website so that you're better positioned to rank on page one and get some of those organic clicks. And again, the more organic clicks you can get, uh, the less that you have to rely on PPC and paid ads uh, for, uh, for lead generation. So, Starting off here, I use a tool called inlinks.net. It's a freemium tool. Well, they'll allow you to, they'll allow you limited access for, uh, act for analyzing your website and analyzing your content. Uh, but if you just run you know, one uh, uh, restoration business website, then that's good enough. So first you would create an account. Uh, Actually, let's go here. You, you'll create an account. So basically, just provide your email and password. And I'm already logged in, so you can't see it here. Uh, but you provide your email and password. You'll get a confirmation, and then that'll take you to the screen. And for the purpose of this, this video, there are some other features here that I won't get into. Uh, we're going to create a new brief, and that's how I got to this page. So enter the keyword you want to rank for. So first you're gonna put your market in. So for this case, uh, English United States for your keyword, uh, just to keep things simple and let's do water damage restoration your city. Uh, so since I'm in Houston, I'm gonna do water damage restoration Houston. But, you know, of course, you update that to whatever location you're in or whatever service that you really want to boost your search results for. And then click the URL to optimize. So I would take the URL that's actually ranking on your website for that search query. So uh, I'm just going to use an example here. I'm going to do a provide someone with a free analysis. Uh, so water damage restoration in Houston. And I'm going to go to the second page here. I want to pick the number 15 result because they do have some opportunity to move up uh, for you know, better organic visibility. So that's these guys, WDR, Water Damage Restoration Houston. So I'm just going to pop in their URL. Click OK. So it might take uh, some time for it to finish the analysis, but basically what it's going to do is take this keyword, look at the first page of the search results, figure out how those pages are optimized for entities, and then pretty much give you an, a score on the level of optimization for your page. Now, this is kind of the next step as far as keyword research and keyword targeting where not only do you need to target certain keywords, but you also need to make sure within your content to mention and include other relevant information that Google and that users of Google have found relevant for the search query. Now, so this particular page has a score of 78. 
And the way you can read this, so you can, it provides you with the key key recommendations. So first thing here is telling you that your content, these guys' content, it needs to be longer. So currently it's at 584 words. And you know, I'm guessing the average for this particular search query is 1,040, at least the, the average for the first page. Uh, the number of semantically related topics. So these are the different topics that are covered uh, on those first, first page results. And then it tells you the missing topics from your, from your page. And so uh, rugs, that might be a little irrelevant unless you do rug and carpet cleaning. Uh, but flooding, if you're doing water damage restoration, you definitely want to talk about flooding, disasters, insurance, and dry. Uh, I think those are all pretty relevant. relevant. And you look down here, and it pretty much tells you the different semantically related topics. So, of course, the first here is water. Uh, it's kind of hard to have a water damage restoration website and not talk about water. Uh, water damage, Houston, since we are targeting Houston with this query, businesses. So I think that would be relevant if maybe you do commercial restoration. Flooding. So that's really important, especially for Houston, where we're very prone to, to floods. Um, so really, you just use these color codes here. So if it's green, that means that you're good. Uh, blue are those semantic topics that are missing. So for these guys, you know, one of the things that they might want to go back and rework that content on that page is talk a little bit more about flooding and how that affects uh, local area businesses and homes. Uh, another thing to, to keep in mind here is this orange, the, these numbers here. So these pretty much tell you kind of a usage and you can just scroll over here. The number, number of occurrences count in the ranking pages. So it pretty much gives you the low end of the spectrum, three, the high end of the spectrum, 30, and then the average. And so it looks like these guys, you know, it's not, they're not, um, you know, they're kind of on the lower end of the spectrum. So you might want to have more mentions of water, more mentions of flooding for sure. Uh, businesses, they actually have too much. So you see the high end of the scale is eight. They're at 16. And it'll tell you right over here that it's overused. So uh, just going through this, um, you can actually, one of the cool things about this is that you can actually copy the content from your page. So you, if you have some time or someone on your team who manages the website, will actually pull the content from your page and you can make real time edits to it to see how that affects your score. So anytime you make edits, you'll just save text and update the analysis. And then just some of the other things here, if you wanna take a quick look at uh, you know, some of the pages that are ranking well, uh, on the first, you know, they're ranking well, just kind of looking at, so remember a big key recommendation was the, the word count. So you see number one, they have almost 2000 words on their page. Number three, they have more than 2000 words. So, uh, it's kind of difficult. There are a lot of other variables here, but it's kind of difficult to rank for something, uh, when you only have a fourth of that word count. Uh, you can kind of just look at some of the topics that they're covering. And this really can give you ideas on what type of content to add to your to your page to make it more semantically related to the search query. And of course, if you know any of these topics are not relevant to the services you offer, then just skip it. Keywords. So you can see the different keywords that uh, these top ranking results are, are using. Uh, so you just want to make sure that it reads well, but, uh, you know, it's definitely worth the time to go through this list. And I like to prioritize these uh, queries because usually they'll take care of so many single word keywords. Content structure. So this kind of gives you an idea. So, you know, uh, on average, in the introduction part of the page where maybe you're just introducing your company, these are the types of keywords that people or these, these ranking websites are using in their introduction in part one and part two and so on. Uh, so uh, kind of gives you an idea on how to not only 
put what words and content and topics to put on your page, but how to structure your page for best results. And then questions. So this is the only question that popped for that query. So, you know, instead of uh, why choose serve pro of town and country, which is very specific to that restoration company, maybe why choose your company? That would be something good to include on your page. So wanted to provide a introduction to uh, entity optimization and using a tool like inlinks.net. There are other, other tools that are out there, uh, but from what I saw, those are all paid to use. Uh, at least inlinks does provide this free option. Uh, but this is really, guys, where uh, SEO is headed in, uh, headed, headed in the future with AI and machine learning. Uh, Google uh, better understands the, the context behind some of these search queries. And tools like inlinks can help you prepare your content so that it's contextually relevant, but also targets those keys or keywords as well. So if you have any questions on that, I know this is a bit more technical than my other videos, feel free to give us a call at the 888 number that's in the video description. And thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and helps you think about how you can improve the SEO on your restoration company's website. Take care and have a great rest of your day.